Feral Druids are among one of the strongest melees in Wrath of the Lich King Arena, being arguably the best hybrid melee, providing a great mixture of burst damage, instant crowd control, and best of all, mobility. In this video, we're going to be covering everything you need to set up your Feral Druid ready for Season 5 Wrath Classic Arena, including the most optimal race, talents, glyphs, professions, macros, and of course, most importantly, gear. In order to put this guide together, we worked alongside Shixi, widely regarded as one of the best European Feral Druids in Wrath's entirety. You can find a link to his socials and stream in the description down below. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race for both the Alliance and the Horde. Sadly, when playing a druid, the choice of race isn't something you can have any control over, as when making a druid, there is only two races you can be. If you're a horde, you're stuck being a tauren, and if you're on the alliance, then your only option is night elf. That being said, however, both races are very useful, but let's break down the racials that you get access to, starting with the horde side. Torrents provide you with two useful racials, most notably War Stomp. This is a 2 minute cooldown, 0.5 second cast AoE ability that stuns all enemies within 8 yards around you for 2 seconds. The most common use of this is as a way to ensure you get a cast off, so for instance, War Stomping a target into a Cyclone. But even then, there are a copious amount of uses, like stopping important casts as a mobility tool to build distance, or even just for the lockdown to secure kills. In addition to War Stomp, the other useful racial is Endurance. This just provides you with a static 5% boost to your base health, equating to around 400 added health at level 80. Whereas if you're on the Alliance, Night Elves once again get access to two useful racials, one of which being Shadow Meld. This is arguably one of the most complex abilities inside of WoW Arena, offering exponential value if you're able to master using it. Shadow Meld when used will cause you to basically enter stealth, much like a discount version of a Rogue's Vanish in a sense, which opens up infinite uses. For example, you can Shadow Meld, quickly enter Prowl, and then use Pounce to stun your target, or even dodge projectiles that are currently in midair, such as Chaos Bolts, Lava Bursts, or or even Frostbolt. As long as it has a travel time, you can dodge it with Shadow Meld. For experienced players that have a good understanding of the game, you can even look to use Shadow Meld to dodge instant abilities like a Rogue's Blind or Kidney Shot, a Paladin's Hammer of Justice, or even a Priest's Psychic Scream. As if you press Meld at the same time they use said abilities, you will immune them. It's this where the skill cap comes into play. Lastly, Night Elves also gain access to Quickness. This, while at first glance doesn't look like anything special, has quite the impact in PvP. The reason is that the default hit rating required to not miss on a level 80 target in PvP is 5%. However, this racial adds an extra 2% on top of that, and with most players only reaching that 5% cap, you're going to have a 2% chance for your enemies to miss any ability in most cases, so that means you could potentially dodge kidney shots, blinds, mortal strikes, or really just any ability you can think of. Next up, we've got Talents. With three different talent trees and 71 individual talent points, deciding where to put them can be incredibly overwhelming. So let's make it easy for you. Feral talents are quite open to interpretation, but what you see on screen now is what we consider the most optimal talent build for the majority of situations and compositions and overall a perfect baseline. Now I know what you're thinking, you're just going to blindly copy this talent tree without even a second thought. Well it's one thing having an optimal spec, but it's even better if you know why you're selecting certain talents. So what we're going to do now is break down and dissect a few talents that we deem are worth knowing about and understanding. The first passive worth talking about is one of our best overall talents, Predatory Strikes. This talent gives you a huge bonus to attack power when inside of cat or bear form, but more importantly, it gives you a 20% per combo point spent to make your next nature spell instant. As we have 5 combo points, this means every time you use a finisher with the maximum amount of combo points, you'll gain this proc. Why this is so integral for Feral is that it gives you access to instant cyclones, and is one of the defining features of Feral inside of PvP, giving the ability to instantly crowd control healers, peel for your team, or even control the pace of the game by cloning your target on low health. 
Then the next talent worth discussing is Primal Fury. This talent, alongside giving you some additional rage in bear form, will cause any critical strikes with cat form abilities to provide you with an additional combo point. As a feral, building up combo points isn't like what you would expect from more recent versions of the game, and with high energy costs coupled with low energy regeneration, it's not as easy as you might first think. So this talent, in conjunction with picking up additional critical strike from our gear, makes building up combo points more efficient, which directly translates into more damage, and because of predatory strikes, more crowd control. Another integral talent is Nurture instinct. As you probably already know as ferals, we aim for melee combat stats such as agility and attack power, but what this talent does is buff the effectiveness of healing spells by 70% of our agility. It's this one single talent that opens up the hybrid playstyle of feral, providing us with that competitive healing output we're known for. That alone makes this talent strong, but then you also have to factor in that on top of that, nurturing instincts also buffs all healing you receive by 20% when inside of cat form, which makes you a lot more durable inside of arena. Then we've got Infected Wounds. This, as a Feral, is our only real way of slowing enemies outside of Feral Charge. How this works is that when you shred or mangle the target, you will infect them with Infected Wounds, a disease which slows the movement speed of the target by 50%, as well as slowing their attack speed. So having a strong slow applied passively by just your standard rotation is a complete godsend. If you've seen or even played a Feral yourself, you'll understand that mana can become quite the issue, especially if you're required to shift between forms. Our next talent, King of the Jungle, reduces the mana cost of shifting between your forms by a massive 60%, and without it, we would more than likely just be stuck inside of one form for the entire game. But not only that, this talent is also great offensively, as it makes your Tiger's Fury go from a very mediocre ability into a great cooldown, as it will now restore 60 energy on use. And then we've of course got all of the talents that grant you a usable ability. Survival Instincts provides us with a last stand or battle master effect on a 3 minute cooldown, increasing our health by 30% for 20 seconds, great for that little bit of added survivability. Feral Charge is an iconic druid ability, giving us two different charge abilities based on if we're in bear or cat form. The cat form Feral Charge will leap to your target and daze them, acting as a great mobility and gap closing ability. Whereas the bear form variation provides you with a 4 second interrupt, and without this we have no standard interrupt, making this crucial for scoring kills, stopping crowd control, or even preventing damage. Alongside also rooting the target in the process, this makes it multifunctional as you can be using this as a way to also peel melee. Then we have Mangle, which gives us an additional combo point generator with no positional requirement, while also buffing the damage of all our bleeds by 30%. And last of all, we've then got the Feral Capstone ability, Berserk, which is our trademark offensive cooldown, reducing the energy cost of all of our abilities by 50% and making us immune to all fears effects in the process. With the rest of our talent points, it's then worth jumping into Restoration to pick up both Fuhrer and Omen of Clarity. Fuhrer is just a great quality of life talent, causing you to gain additional rage whenever you shift into bear form, which is a must have for enabling ease of use of both bash and feral charge, while also allowing you to keep all of your energy when you shift in and out of cat form. Whereas Own of Clarity is a must have, as it provides you with clear casting procs based off your spells and auto attacks, this will then reduce the mana cost or energy cost of your next ability by 100%, which is great for those energy issues we touched on earlier. After selecting your talents, the next step in setting up your character is going to be picking your glyphs. Glyphs are separated into two categories, those being major and minor, in which we can have three of each. Starting off with major glyphs, there is some variation here depending on compositions, matchups, and even play styles. One glyph you will never want to be without though, and our first recommendation is Glyph of Savage Roar. This just passively increases the effectiveness of your Savage Roar by 3%, providing you a nice overall damage increase. To go alongside that, we suggest Glyph of Rip. This passively increases the duration of your rip on targets by 4 seconds, as we always want to be maintaining rip on our kill target, and regardless of combo points spent, rip lasts 12 seconds, so this glyph makes it a lot easier to maintain your rip, opening up more possibilities for finishers. You could potentially swap this out in certain compositions where you value burst higher. A good example would be Feral Rogue 2v2. The third glyph we recommend is Glyph of Shred. This causes your shred ability to increase the duration of your rip on the target by 2 seconds, up to a maximum of 6, meaning if you have both the Glyph of Rip and Glyph of Shred, you could potentially increase the duration of your rip from 12 seconds all the way to 22. While these three act as a great default, there are two other major glyphs you might want to consider swapping to depending on the scenario. One of those being Glyph of Bark Skin. This is great defensively as whenever you use your Bark Skin, you will also reduce your chance to be critically hit by 25%. The downside of this being that Bark Skin as a Feral can be dispelled, so it makes it very situational. But regardless, if you need added defense, this is going to be your best option. 
And last of all, in those compositions where you value burst more so than sustained damage, or you know your games are going to be short, then you can pick up the Glyph of Berserk. This just increases the duration of your Berserk by 5 seconds, making the offensive cooldown last for 20 seconds instead of 15. Now for minor glyphs. These are by no means as important as major glyphs, but still provide some decent benefits. First of all, you'll want Glyph of Dash. This is ridiculously strong for a minor glyph, and passively reduces the cooldown of your dash ability by 20%, making dash drop down from a baseline 3 minute cooldown down to two minutes. For your second minor glyph, we suggest Glyph of Thorns. This just increases the duration of thorns when used on yourself by 50 minutes, making it go from a 10 minute duration up to an hour, the same as your Gift of the Wild. And last of all, the only other useful minor glyph in PvP is Glyph of the Wild. This cuts the mana cost of both your Gift of the Wild and Mark of the Wild abilities in half. It's not often you rebuff these inside of Arena, but if you ever find yourself doing so, then you'll of course want to be spending less mana doing it. Okay, so we're now at that point in the video where we get into the topic you've all been waiting for, and of course, the one that's most important, gear. But remember that having a lightsaber doesn't make you a Jedi, just like having the right gear won't instantly make you a gladiator. So check out our courses on skill capped after this to start learning from the best. Anyway, since gearing can be a bit complicated, we'll be providing you with two separate sets of gear, gems and enchants. One of which being complete best in slot gear, which consists of a mixture of raid and arena point gear and reliant on both weekly raid lockouts and arena caps, giving you something to aim for in the long run. The other one being a set composed of relatively easy farmable gear from a mixture of honor, heroics, rep, or even gold, none of which will be locked behind weekly resets or arena points. We'll break down both of these gear sets shortly, but first let's discuss stat priority, as even if you get a piece of gear that isn't on either of these lists, you can easily use this as reference to see how that item shapes up in comparison. Your most important stat to reach is your hit rating, and you're going to want to get this to 5%. This is vital so your spells, abilities, and attacks don't end up missing on your target in PvP. Missing something like an important finisher could just immediately cost you the game, so always get your hit rating above all else. After that, resilience becomes your overall best stat for the added survival survivability and is a must have inside of arena. Following resilience we've got agility. As a feral this is our primary stat providing us with critical strike, dodge rating, attack power, and even armor when inside a cat form. Last of all you'll want to then aim for pieces of gear with critical strike on them. We covered this in the talent section but due to the talent primal fury all critical strikes will give us double the combo points making critical strike very desirable. One last thing to touch on in terms of stat priority is spell penetration. This primarily affects our cyclone due to it being classed classified as a nature ability, but classes like shamans with nature resistance totem, hunters with aspect of the wild, and mage with mage armor all have a chance at resisting cyclone unless we dedicate a certain amount of gems to spell penetration. But currently in season 5, this is just not worth playing around, but in future gear sets and seasons this may change. Alright, so let's get back to the gear sets. Starting with our pre bis list, this most notably consists of the 5 piece Savage Gladiators Dragonhide set. This can all be farmed freely from Battlegrounds or Winter Grasp, as the only requirement is just honor points. Also coming from honor, we have some deadly gladiator off pieces, those of which being boots, bracers, belt, and neck. Despite being deadly eye level gear, all these off pieces require no arena points in order to purchase, and instead again only require honor. We suggest prioritizing buying the bracers, belt, and boots first, as they are also included inside of our overall best in slot gear. One thing to consider though is that the boots and belt both require 1300 and 1400 arena rating respectively. If this is currently unobtainable, you can instead use the hateful alternatives. You'll then want to jump into some five man heroic dungeon content and grab the Mobius Band from the Culling of Stratholm, and then the Cloak of the Gushing Wound and Staff of Trickery, both coming from the Violet Hold Heroic. And while doing so, make sure you farm enough emblems of heroism to purchase the Idol of the Ravenous Beast, which is your best in slot emblem for some time. For your second ring, we've put Band of the Kirin Tour, which can be purchased inside of Dalaran for 8500 gold, but if you can't afford this, you can opt to go with the Deadly PvP alternative for the time being. Last of all, for trinkets, you'll want a Gladiator's Medallion, which can be purchased for honor, and then to pair up with that, your best in slot trinket is going to be the agility version of Dark Moon Card Greatness. This again is included in our best of slot gear list, but if you're unable to afford this, then the Dark Moon Card Berserker is a much cheaper alternative that's still very strong. Moving on now to your full best in slot gear set. 
To start, you'll notice the majority of this consists of the Deadly Gladiator's Dragonhide set. We'll be aiming to pick up four pieces of this, so that's the head, shoulders, chest, and gloves, skipping the legs. This is all purchased via arena points. We already touched on the Deadly Off pieces, but our best in slot gear include the belts and boots both coming from Honor, with trinkets and our idol remaining the same as well. Then three very strong best in slot gear pieces all coming from Naxxramas. From the 25 man version, we have our Amulet Fool's Trial, the Strong Handed Ring, and then our Weapon of Journey's End, with our Cloak, Cloak of Mastery, coming from the 10 man variation. For legs, you'll ideally be wanting to pick up Leggings of the Honor from Sartharian 25 man with two drakes active. These provide us with a large amount of hit, attack power, and two sockets. If you're unable to obtain these, you can pick up the Deadly Legs, but we'll have to accommodate the lack of hit by swapping gems around. Finally, we suggest grabbing the Surge Needle Ring, which drops from Mally Ghost in the Eye of Eternity 10 man, but is also bind on equip, so the more fortunate of you can purchase it from the auction house to save some time. Next up, we have professions, which are quite important assets inside Wrath of the Lich King. For professions, there is some variation depending on your composition and even playstyle to some extent. Overall, though, the two that we recommend picking for the large majority of situations is jewel crafting and engineering. Jewel crafting is especially strong as it provides you with the highest overall stat boost compared to any single other profession in the game. The reason for this being that you can gain access to three improved jewel crafting gems, which can then be used to gain extra resilience, spell pen, or even hit rating depending on what you need. As standard epic gems are not available until season 7, these jewel crafting gems provide a considerable bonus over the rare quality alternative as you can see on screen. Equally as strong is our second profession of engineering, the reason being the hand mounted pyro rocket. This is an enchant you're able to put on your glove and utilize exclusively as an engineer. You can then use your gloves and will fire a rocket at the target dealing between 2 to 3000 damage. This is not only instant but also off the global cooldown, meaning you can combine it with other abilities for some unexpected burst damage. This is something you'll want to be using for the entirety of Wrath, but it's especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that the damage doesn't scale, so as a result, it's obviously going to be the strongest in the early seasons where players' health pools are at their lowest. Alternatively, you could consider picking up blacksmithing as it provides you with an extra socket slot in your wrists and gloves. This is strong as it allows you to incorporate two additional gems in your gear, which when compared to engineering is sacrificing some burst damage that you get from the rocket in turn for some more passive resilience and damage reduction. This will gain value in later seasons when we get access to standard non jewel crafting epic gems. Finally, if you're all about maximizing your burst damage, you could completely forego jewel crafting and just pick up tailoring alongside engineering. The reason for this being the Sword Guard Embroidery Cloak Enchant, which when applied to a cloak will give your melee attacks a chance at increasing your attack power by 400 for 15 seconds. What makes this strong is that it shares a 45 second internal cooldown, which makes it align perfectly with trinkets like Dark Moon Card Greatness, providing you with a crazy amount of added stats for a short time. Finally, to round out this video and to finalize setting up your character, we've got macros. Starting off, we've got the standard focus macros. These all help to make your gameplay a lot more fluid, preventing the need to swap target before using these abilities. You ideally want a focus macro for all important crowd control and utility. For Feral Druids, this is primarily Cyclone, Feral Charge, Bash, and Entangling Roots. The other way of doing this is by using arena macros. This is definitely the most optimal way, but requires more binds to do so. As a whole, arena 1-2-3 macros allow you to interact with all opponents in the arena regardless of who you have on your focus or who you have targeted at the time. We highly suggest getting these macros for at the very least your cyclone, but if you want the most optimal macros, you will also want to take this route for the other abilities as well. You will need three different macros for this, like the ones you see on screen now, and you can adapt this to new abilities by replacing your word cyclone with the name of the ability you want to use if you decide on taking this route. Aside from the general focus or arena 1 to 3 macros, there are a few other must have macros. In Wrath of the Lich King, you're able to perform power shifting, which is a term that refers to the process of shifting forms without actually leaving the form itself. This is integral for quickly shifting roots and slows. Most importantly, you will want this for cat form, but you can also make macros for both travel and bear form to do the same effect. This does mean though that you're no longer able to leave your form by pressing the ability again. You can use any nature ability to leave form, but you can also create a cancel form macro. This has the added benefit of being able to leave forms while being on the global cooldown, which at times can be very beneficial, so is a good habit to get into. On the topic of canceling abilities, as a melee it's also beneficial to have a quick bind to cancel blessing of protection so you don't scurry around trying to click off the buff if you want to attack, or if you get hand of freedom used on you to break out of a nova and don't want 
want a mage to steal it. Additionally, in a similar style as the power shifting macros, you can make one for Prowl. This is good to have, as in situations where you're looking for a re-stealth, it's common practice to in turn be mashing your Prowl button, waiting for the moment you drop combat. Doing so, you may find times where you enter Prowl, accidentally hit the button again, and drop out. This macro just makes it so that if you press Prowl again, once already prowling, you're unable to cancel it by accident. Also on the topic of Prowl, another must-have macro is this Prowl and Pounce all-in-one. Unlike rogues, we don't have access to a stealth bar, and in order to save space while also being more efficient, you can create a macro that changes your prowl bind to pounce when you're inside of stealth, making it the perfect two-in-one combo. Last of all, a good macro to have in terms of survivability is one which quickly puts you into bear form and uses survival instincts. Shifting into bear form and using survival instincts is one of your primary ways at surviving sticky situations. This macro just does both, so it will get you into bear form and pop your defensive. Great for those times where you're stuck in a stun, for example, and want something to spam in order to survive once you're out. All right, guys, that about wraps up this video. Hopefully this provides you with all the information you need to get started. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next one.